Jerry, what's up, man? <laughs> well, good morning. Do I have it the right way? Because I'm one way and you're the other way. Because your so phone is turned sideways. Crazy? So should I turn it back up? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't do these things. See how? See already. Already. There you go. Let me get my glasses. So I, oh, okay. Go ahead. Hey, I got... What's up, man? I don't believe I'm doing this with silver spoons. Oh my God, this is just so amazing. So listen, this first is... of all, he's gonna give me all kind of names. I'm silver spoon. Give, give how many names I get? Um, just a silver spoons. Um, it, it's, um, with a silver silver knife, silver spoons. Um, you whichever know. whatever comes to my mind, yeah, I just think, <laughs> and we go and we put silver with it. Well, you know what, what, what bothers me? You know, I have God knows how many electric toothbrushes that I get from Dish Nation. Yeah. And I use my regular toothbrush, and shit always get the bristle cut and caught in my tooth. Ouch. That like, that's not good. It's not good. It's just so hard to come out. I tried to use some scissors, and it didn't come out. But nevertheless, I'll just deal with it until I get to Dr. Heavenly, honey, and you can pull it out. <laughs> well, you going to say the bristle will suck forever, huh? Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Well, how you? First of all, welcome to the first whiskey. We're going to talk about all kind of stuff with first whiskey. Cheers. Where, where's your whiskey at? Uh, they told me to back up. Hold on. How do I back up, honey? I don't, I mean. You have a tripod they, they, here. Do you have a tripod? Uh, yeah, I got a tripod, but it doesn't, Um, you see, it, it had you sideways. I don't, it doesn't go. Oh, here, let me. Oh. Turn it. Yeah, hold on. Let me um, let me see how this thing goes. <laughs> I turned it, but then it doesn't turn all the way. Oh my God, this is crazy. You know, I'm challenged when it comes to all. This. Hold on a second. Let me put the phone okay. Down. <laughs> oh, maybe I'll do it this way. First of all, oh, I told y'all this is gonna be a crazy. I got it. Crazy as hell. Interview. Uh, hold on. Oh started, Jesus. Hold on. Okay. All right. Everybody, all right. listen. First of all, if y'all have any questions. Uh, there's a little question button at the bottom, and uh, throughout the interview, I'll be picking a couple to um, to ask my brother Gary. And uh, look, he done knocked the Wi. Gary, you broke the Wi-Fi. Jesus help him. Somebody send him Wi-Fi. Jesus be a Wi-Fi. Help him, Jesus. He done broke the internet, people. He done broke his internet, and I don't know how he did it. So, uh... <laughs> Gary, see see what I got to deal with now. This is how we deal with it. See, see, see now he's gonna have to come back in. Let me get to me. So yeah, again, <laughs> y'all just hang out. He's gonna jump back in. This is gonna be interesting. Uh, this is gonna be, you know, Teddy Riley, baby face. <laughs> so y'all bear with us for a second. Help me, Jesus. He done broke his whole internet. I'm telling you. He listen, we might just be us talking for a minute. Let's see if he jump back in, Jesus. Uh, Lord have mercy. But any questions y'all have for him, um, we, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get it right. Okay. There's a question mark at the bottom if you know how to work the questions. And anything I don't ask or whatever. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anything I don't ask or you think we should ask, go ahead. Um, listen, I'm gonna be cracking up this whole interview. All right, he's back in here. Here we go. <sighs> oh, shanananosis. Shanananosis. Oh, Shanananosis, help me. Gee, oh, he done went and changed shirts and put his glasses on. Help me, Jesus. Yeah, so I could see, Lord Jesus, help us today, glory. Help us, Lord. I was scared. I was scared, man. Let me just, you know, Sim, I don't know how to do nothing. I don't even know how to work these damn phones, honey. I just need a phone that's just going to die. All this madness that y'all do with this technology drives me crazy. I can't do Zoom. I can't do this shit. This is my first time doing this, and it seems like it's going to be fun, but I'm just challenged. Man, we we talked so about, talk about Zoom. I told you I'd help you out with Zoom. You just got to hit me, man. Yeah. Yeah, let me have some Jesus juice. Hey, cheers. Hey, but first, whiskey. Cheers. My Jesus juice, baby. Michael Jackson created that for us. Some Jesus <laughs> juice. What'd you say? That's Jesus juice. What'd you say after that? Michael Jackson created that for us. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> you don't do a lot of interviews, man. What's, what You, uh... I'm so thank you. First of all, thank you for, for popping in with me for a minute and having a couple of laughs. Uh, you know, I think it's much needed right now. It's yeah. Really crazy shit going on. So so thank you, man. Um, thank you. Well, you're welcome. You know, a lot of people, 
I mean, I guess, I don't know, a lot of people don't really, I ask me to do interviews, I, 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 I do interviews, but I guess just maybe it's just not really out there or whatever, but I, you know, I love doing interviews, you know, and I like interviewing. Interviewing, so, right, right. But, but I think you got my first Instagram interview. Hey! Yeah, so, 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 so that's, that's, you should thank God and kiss the ground. Oh, hold on. Well, you know what? I just got finished bleaching the ground, so hold on one second. Okay, now I'm explaining. You are Muslim, huh? <laughs> Yo, I remember uh, when, when we, it was a couple of Christmases ago, we was at the radio station. But you, you called me something. You called me one of them Muslim cats, that one of them terrorist groups. I was like, really, Gary? On film? I, I always thought you were Muslim, though. I mean, Silver, you, are, you always you look like a Muslim. I guess that's being stereotypical, See? but I just always thought you was a Muslim. No, man. Baptist, I thought it was part of the Ayatollah Khomeini people. Old, old school Baptist, man. I got an old school Baptist mama, old school Baptist daddy, raised up in the church, you know? Yeah, Jesus. But I'm still a heathen. Well, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you ain't right, man. Um, Port Arthur, you, you're from, that's where you was born? Yeah, no, I was born in Opelousa, Louisiana. Okay. Now, I never lived there, but I was born there. But I was raised in Port Arthur, Texas, you know? Put all to honey is the home of Janice Joplin. Hey. Um, 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 UGK. That's what everybody know about UGK. Oh yeah. And um, Jimmy Johnson, the coach of the Cowboys, and um, myself. And yourself. That's all. That, see, that's all. That, as long as you put yourself yeah. in there. That's all that yeah. When did you? When did you realize you were funny as hell? Like, did you always know you were funny? Like the first time you made somebody laugh it was like, oh, oh shit. Like, when did you realize that? And I still don't realize. I never realized that I was funny. And I still don't think I'm funny. I just, you know, say what comes to my mind. Yeah. And I guess it just come across as being funny. But, but I, I never too. subscribed to that, being a comedian or anything like that. I ever said I was funny. I just talk, honey. And, you know, what I say, you know, people just gravitate to them like, oh, that's a lot. <laughs> but I don't, uh, I never thought I was funny at all. <laughs> You gonna crack so, down. I'm trying to interview you and be serious, but I'm gonna crack up the whole time. Have you ever done stand up? Have you ever had a desire to be on stage in a stand up capacity? Or this is more, like you said, the lane that you like to be in is, hey, I say what comes to my mind and y'all gonna get what, what you get. Yeah, no, I never um, I never thought about funny or anything like that. And, you know, I never forget the honey, like um, Mr. Smiley, honey, always told us on the show, there's only one comedian on the show. Uh, so that means you just sit your ass back yeah. and cover yourself accordingly. Yeah. So that's, you know, so I, I never really, I, I just, I mean, I've hosted the, um, the um, improv many times, you know, okay. and I, I, you know, I've done hosted before and all that, so, but I just never really, you know, subscribed to or tried to, you know, be a comedian. So sort of because I, I mean, I'm just maybe funny in situations. I don't consider okay. myself as being, you know, a comedian or whatever, though. And trying to get them and tell some jokes, because maybe I'm scared I will be booed. And honey, these are going to be like, bitch, shut up and get off the stage, honey. So, <laughs> so you ever want touch up, to um, comedian Heather. Would you, would you ever want, if comedian Heather's funny, would you ever want, like, your own show, or do you... Oh, yes. I would love my own show. Actually, we um did a, um, what you call it, uh, you had one for, for a minute on, uh, on Yeah, TV. we did a, 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 a trailer or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. um, when, when we do Rick Smile for real, we did a show, um, you know, that was supposed to lead up to my show. Yep. But um, it just didn't happen, you know, what have you, whatever reasons. But, uh, yeah, I would love to have my own show. I would love to have my own um, radio show. And I would like to have my own um, TV talk show. I love doing TV talk. I just envision yeah. myself doing my own talk show, honey, just sitting on the stage real pretty. Yeah, cute yeah. clothes on, honey, yeah. just crossing my legs like Oprah used to do and ask the questions, honey. <laughs> I always did, you know, envision that. And it's going to happen one of these old days, honey. Yeah. You know, I think I'm going to still be around long enough for that to happen I one of so. these days. I think so. <laughs> yes. You, you, you live a, uh, you know, as I do, a very private life. I mean, you, you are very much in the limelight. You got a big fan base, but you, you keep, there's not a lot of things about you out there. Right, that you don't want to go. How does that? Does that? Is that just your way of saying same with all these things that's going on and how people treat you and stuff like that? Yeah, and and not just that. Like I tell people, you know, I'm public but private. But it's not like that. I'm just this um, private person, and I just um, th um just seek out to be private. That's just how I'm because I was raised. My mom always always tell us that people um love you, honey, to hate you. Number one, and nothing mm -hmm. two hundred people like you as far as they can see you. 
Wow. You know, wow. And, and I tell people too that wow. I don't subscribe to celebrity because my thing is, honey, are you a celebrity today? And when they fire your ass from the radio station or the TV um, show, honey, in two more weeks, honey, they're going to be like, Gary, who? Right. Who? Right. People forget you that quick. Yeah. So I've been um, um, let go from a job before. So I know how it feels. So my thing is, honey, I don't want to put myself in a situation like that where, you know, you read your own damn press. And one thing, that's one thing I do believe in, not reading your own press. And you right. sitting there thinking that it's right. all about you. And right. then when your ass gone, honey, now you're looking crazy. Crap. But what happened to Selby? He used to call me every day. Now we're not talking. See, so I don't get into that. So right. that's why I keep myself just, honey, this is it. Because I'm not going to sit here and try to make like, oh, I'm this big star. And, oh, I'm this different. And then, damn it, when your ass gone, nobody's around, honey. Like um, Smokey Robinson, the tears of a clown, honey. So, right. no. Right. So and I don't get caught up like that. And, and people would equate that to being real and being humble. Um, because there's a lot of people that they believe in their own celebrity, and that to me is when it's their downfall. You start believing exactly. in your own shit, you start smelling your own self. You're going down at this point because you're too high. You, you know, and, and first of all, the people are the ones that put you here. The people in the love and the fan love. So why would you think that you over somebody else? So that's that's a good way to look at. It. That's that's a very humble approach and a real real approach, man. Um, that's 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 big. Uh -uh. Oh, yeah, that's one thing, honey. I ain't crazy, okay? Yeah. I just acted. I mean, but I'm far crazy. from being. You I'm crazy. far from being. Cause, honey, you can't get me, honey. Yeah. Trust me, you cannot get me. And nobody wants to lose their job or anything like that. Because, you know, just like recent, you know, the stage had this big cut. Yeah. And what happened, yeah. and stuff. And I sat down and, and I thought about it. It kind of saddened me. I said, now, nah, you know, because God knows I wouldn't want to lose my job. But had I lost my job, you know, I would be, you know, prepared for it and stuff, but nobody wants to lose their job. That's because right. one of the things about being in the entertainment business where people have to realize, I, I think, anyway, my opinion, when you get defined by your job. And you know, everybody know you by your job. Right. And then when your damn job is gone, and honey, you walking around looking crazy, because people are like, well, how, well, I thought that you don't hear your animal. No, you don't hear your animal. And that kind of looked like it would kind of hurt you. Right. Because you know, you did done this job all these years. And stuff, and then you just like thrown out, honey. Right. And if you don't be able to save your money, you up a creek. And that's with any job, but more so in the job in the entertainment business because you're more visible. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now you you started um, with uh, Russ Park. Yep, uh, as I started call um, like calling. You was calling in yep. all the time. And, and let me tell you something, Silver. I don't know how it happened. I don't know what I did, but I never get. I moved to Dallas though in 1989, and I um, was living with my sister. Because I had moved from, you know, that Houston. I moved from Houston because I had a breakdown. And my parents were not letting me move back to, to um, Houston. Okay. So I moved to Dallas with my sister. I keep wiping my nose. And um, so um, I, I was living with her. I don't know. I just have, I called the radio station. Um, um, Hot 100. Hot 100. I think. Uh, yeah, okay. one, Hot 100. And I just called. I was talking to Russ Park. And what, I mean, you know, and I, whatever I would say to Russ, you know, it um, he, he just laughed about it and yeah. stuff. And honey, I just start calling every day. So eventually, honey, you know, when Russ and Russ and Alfredo, when they still together today too, when he would go out and do a remote, I would go out and meet them. Okay. And um, at that time I was in the medical field because I was going to school to be a nurse. My mama wanted me to be a nurse, so I was going to school wow. to be a nurse. So I was working um, at um, I think I was at um, St. Paul's Hospital in Dallas at that time. And um, so um, I um, I would go out and meet them and hang out with them. And let me tell you something about that. Groupie wasn't a word then. Mm -hmm. They weren't called, using the word groupie then. Because right now, you would call that a groupie. Right. Go and hang right. out and meet the right. DJ and right. trying to hang out with them. But right. I would go out and hang out with them, honey, and, you know, talk shit with them and do stuff with them. And eventually, um, um, Russ, um, well, at that time, too, no, let me back up. I would hang out with him and do stuff. So Russ um, would pay me. He would pay me $20. Or he would give me tickets to a concert. Okay. That was my pay. Okay. So I, um, and honey, I took it because, you know, I already had a job. I was working at the hospital. Right. So the money wasn't a problem. Like you just started, you loved, it was fun. You was like, hey, this is, this is crazy. Exactly. Right. Like Oprah said, it's so eloquently. Oprah said, honey, if you like doing something so bad enough, honey, you'll do it for free. You do it. And I have done it for free and still doing some freebies. Yeah. But, um, so I, and so the money wasn't an issue. Right. So I, um, did that and hung out with him and then he would pay me the $20, $25, would give it to So he been, he laid on moving forward. Russ um um was started a TV show. It was a dance show. So honey, I would go on the dance show and dance and clown on that and stuff like that. Because like I said, I liked doing it, so I was doing it right. for free. 
Right. And um, then eventually I said to myself, I said, well, you know, I need to get paid. I'm tired of being on Rusty's, um, pay, um, um, I'm tired of being on Rusty's payroll. So I want to get hired by the station. Right. So I talked to the program director, and the program director told me to fill out an application, blah, blah, blah. So I filled out an application, okay. and they hired me. Now, my title was I was an associate producer. Now, that's one thing, which is, this might be a whole long thing, though, but one thing I like about, you know, um, semantics, so to speak, and words, mm -hmm. an associate producer. Now, when I told people, oh, girl, I'm an associate producer, they're like, oh, yeah. bitch, you're an associate producer? Yes. I was a phone operator. That's what a social producer was, <laughs> answering the phones. When people would call and request songs, my ass answered, oh, you want a, you want a song for um, Lil Baby? Oh, OK. And I put that down, write that yep. down yep. and stuff. Yep. But I still did because that's what I like doing, and that's what I wanted to do. So eventually, um, I did that for a while in the um, station. I went to Cancun on a vacation, oh. came back, the station was gone. Damn. They flipped the station. Damn. Yes, yeah, so honey. Another, they went to another format, didn't they? Yeah, they went to another format. So then when I um so then that but that format it came another station. So I got hired there. I got hired in promotions. So I worked in promotions for like eight or nine damn years. That's why I always talk to the people, the guys and stuff at the station with right now with promotions. Because hell I was there before. Right. And I know how that feels and stuff. Now it has its perks and it had its perks, you know, and stuff like that. But honey, I had to work from the bottom on yep. up. You know. Wow. Wow. So, so I know how this game is played or whatever and stuff, and you know, but when it's something you like doing, you'll do it. Wow, that's that's crazy. So this is something that before you were starting to do like the call-ins and hanging out. Oh yeah, yeah. Cheers, cheers. We, he's drinking Jesus juice. I'm drinking whiskey, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I didn't mean to choke you up, my man. <laughs> Michael got that Jesus juice. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, Michael. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm trying to get through Jesus. Okay. All right. Was there something that you, you wanted to do? Okay, you say you was calling in. It was something that you love. Was this something you knew you wanted to do with radio and, and this kind of stuff before? Or was it like as you started calling in, that's when you realized, like, oh, this shit is pretty cool? <laughs> no, I have a friend <clears throat> named Pat. Mm -hmm. When me and Patsy were in school, we just all I got tears, though. Huh? I got oh. tears. Oh. When me and Patsy were in school, Patsy and I said, we wanted to be movie stars. We said, oh, girl, we're going to be movie stars when we grow up, and we're going to live next door to each other in Hollywood. And that's all I said about, you know, entertainment. Nice. You know, I would have never dreamed, honey, that, you know, it would have happened the way it did. But, right. you know, it happened. Wow. And, you know, it just went from there. I mean, and it's amazing. And then too, you know, and I kind of shifted friends too. You know, after I had my breakdown mm -hmm. uh, and I moved, so I kind of shifted friends. You know, because the thing about it is, too, what I learned, and my mom kind of told us this too: you can't tell everybody your dreams because that's not their dream; it's your dream. And when you tell people your dreams, so right. sometimes people try to diminish your dream, try to break it down. How in the hell are you gonna be a Ooh. damn radio and TV, honey? You ain't yeah. different. <laughs> And, you know, and it happens that way. So what I had to do was I wow. kind of shifted my little friends and, you know, and I kept everything in my head. Now, I had some coworkers in Dallas. They had vision boards. Well, I didn't do a vision board. My vision board was in my head. So I already knew what I wanted, and I went after it. And all the things that I wanted to acquire, I went after it. And when I saw it, I felt that the Lord was putting that in my path for mm. me to have. Yes. And I got it. Yes. And that was that. Yes. Now, you, you speak on, um, you know, a breakdown and coming through, and, and obviously it made you stronger. Um, you seem like a person that's full of faith. Um, where does th your background of faith come from, and how does that play a part now as you continue to go forward and keep going up and up and up? Oh, my faith, honey, is definitely strong now. One thing I don't do, which I'm going to talk about it here, though, but what I don't do, I don't go, because you know how you got these people, how you going to bless? How you yeah. bless? Well, we know you bless. Tell me how you do it. But um, I don't wait, go around wait, honey, what they say. What they say? Bless. You say you bless. You doing okay? Bless. Okay, girl. Okay, good. I'm glad you're blessed. Cause I'm blessed too. Like appreciate. But tell me how you're doing. Don't tell me how you are. I know how you are. You're blessed. <laughs> but um, but I don't go around, honey, talking my faith and putting it on the flagpole. Cause I don't have to profess my faith with nobody. Cause that's between me and God. 
And my thing is this, honey. I believe in, you know, you know, I have definitely, my faith is definitely strong because I have been through a lot. You know, and the thing about this is what people don't realize, honey, just because a person look a certain way, like, you know, I might look to it, but you don't know exactly what I'm going through. Right. And, you know, and, and I don't think, you know, I have to tell everybody what I'm going through, but it's, you know, it's just, right. we assume too much. Right. But my thing is, I just believe, and I tell my mama this all the time, because my mama go to church every Sunday, and I be like, mama, you know, she be speaking, saying these different things and stuff like that. I say, mama, you go to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Go, where's your faith? Right. I mean, you can't worry about this. Right. I don't worry about a lot of things, honey. Trust me, honey. You know, I didn't went through cancer, honey, right. and still dealing with it. Right. And I have um had breakdowns, honey. When I lived in um Texas, I had my yeah. nervous a nervous breakdown while I was in the hospital for three months mm -hmm. and so. And I mean, you know, but you just gotta be strong and clever. And my thing is this too: what people don't realize, honey, just because you look at a person, just because you feel like you know about a person's um sexuality or whatever it is, and mm -hmm. you still don't know that person's faith, and you don't know what that person is going through. And my thing is, honey, I ain't got to prove nothing to nobody because, honey, as long as I know, honey, and you see me, I, I know, honey, what I, what works for me. Right. And that's how I am. So I definitely, honey, believe in, you know, right. God, and I definitely have faith, honey, and I know, you know, things happen. Like, I had a, just a, a situation the other day, and, you know, I got a twitch worried about it, but I knew that it was going to be all right, and, and it's okay, you yeah. know? And, and 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 I just keep moving on and stuff like that, you know. And it, it's just, I mean, it's just something that people, you know, it, it's, it's an individual thing, but you got to know how to separate the truth from the fiction, the real from the fake, you know, just all that stuff. Like, now, nah, I don't even hang out with a whole bunch of people and stuff like that because right. my thing is I don't let people get close to me because it's just so hard to trust people because I didn't been through that before, honey. Yes. yes. And people are, you know, people come to you a certain way, but you gotta watch it though, because it's just, it's just you know, like my cousin said, "Bitch, I'm too old of a cat to be treated like a kitten." So you can't, you know, <laughs> Wait, so you can't get me. Say that again. I am too old of a cat to be treated like a kitten. So, mm -mm. so I just y'all better write that down right now, baby. You know, so it's just it, you just you know you just move on, you know, and I just don't let much get me. I'm just okay, just when someone okay, girl, just I just don't. I don't. I don't just let it get to me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Now, you uh, would you consider yourself an optimist, a pessimist, or a realist? Can but I mean, you might be more than one. Okay. Because I'm optimist. You... I'm, I'm optimist, and I'm a realist. Honey, you know. So you know. But one thing, a part of the being a realist, son, I don't have a pro I don't believe. I don't have a problem with you know telling people and saying things how it is. But you got to be cool with things. You can't just be blatant, honey, and just tell me, oh, bitch, that hairstyle is ugly. Right. No, girl, you can't do that. You got to have some kind of damn um, kook about yourself, and right. you got to kind of have, just, you know, just you, tailor it differently and stuff. Like, it's more than one way to skin a cat. You can tell a person something that's not, you know, there or whatever, right. but still be nice about it. Right. You know, right. So, and I don't believe in hurting people. I don't believe in that. Right. I don't believe in doing that to people, that's honey. Right. And, 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 and right. I, that's just something I don't believe in. Wow. So let, let's switch gears a little bit. Um, and let's talk about your love for fashion. You obviously have a love for fashion. You have uh, all the outfits, all the jewelry, all the glasses. Um, have you always had a love for fashion, um, even before all the radio and, and all? The oh, honey. Yes, because I grew up. My mama was a seamstress, honey. And I used to have to trim all those patterns, honey, with my mom. I used to have to trim those Butterick patterns, those McCall patterns, those bold wow. patterns, those simplicity patterns, honey. Wow. I had to trim all those patterns. So I was looking at all this, even though it was women fashion, honey, all those patterns, honey. But it just gave me a because my mama used to make our little um, leisure suits growing right. up. Right. So, and my mama and daddy were both fashionable people, honey. So they both dressed like my mama dressed from a boutique, honey, in Port Arthur, and my dad was the same way. And we weren't rich, but, honey, we had enough, and right. they were to get what they wanted. So, and, honey, and you I made it, took and upon that. And they made it look good. No matter how much money yeah. they, made, they, made it, they made it look good. Yeah, and I took upon that. Me and my brothers, you know, whereas I'm the one that's the only brother. It's five of us from my immediate family. And when my oldest brother, he passed, may he rest in peace. All but right. he was a dresser as well. But we all, um, you know, we, I just love fashion. But. I ain't no damn fashion crazy person where I'm spending all my damn money on right. fashion. Because one thing, honey, I know how to dress, and I know how to get Gucci for $2. Okay. So, honey, and it's Gucci. Please see that, please, because... 
Cause I don't know you how go how to a damn. See the waves. We we need to learn about consignment stores, baby, honey. I go to consignment stores, honey, and I get all that, honey. I know I still got my first pair of Gucci shoes that I bought from the consignment store in Dallas, honey. I may have paid like what fifty dollars for them, but I still wow. have them. That's been goddamn over thirty years ago. Wow. So, but yes. So you just go to the consignment store, and if you know how to dress, you go to the damn Goodwill and get go. all kinds of stuff out of Goodwill, because Goodwill get all those um, high end stuff. Mm. The damn people that work at Goodwill get it first, and you don't get it. Right. But you can get all that stuff for a little bit of nothing, honey. And the thing about it is, who gonna know the shit was used? That's right. That's so right. that's right. Um, who gonna have, know? You have a segment. It's not color of the day. It's color. Yes, it's color of the day. Color. Break. And color. Color. Color and color it means the same thing. But I do color for my bougie listeners, and I do color for regular people like myself. Cause color, honey, it means color. Now, I, when I say the color day, say for instance, the color for the day, honey, is terracotta. Is that today? On the high okay. end, you say terracotta, and on the low end, you say red. Because a bougie rich woman ain't going to go to us and say, girl, I want that red blouse. She's going to say, I want that terracotta colored blouse. And then you got Keisha going to say, girl, give me that red blouse. Okay? Oh, my God. So that's how that's done. Oh, my God. So you do color of the day. So can nobody I, gets offended. Say- can I can I get some terracotta Kool Aid? Yeah, that's honey. And, <laughs> and if the person grand enough, they'll know that terracotta is red. <laughs> there you have it, honey. So what is so, the color of today? What's the color of today? Um, the color of the day, honey. And I'm looking at it right now. It's um scarlet flame. Okay. Okay. Now what? Is and that's for, easy. What is it for the for the regular for the regular? A scarlet flame on the high end, red on the low end. <laughs> Think about it. Scarlet is red. Flame is red. Or oh, reddish orange, whatever. So there you have it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. So Simple. If you only had, you know, one fashion designer and one color to pick that you have to wear the rest of your life, is there a particular fashion designer and a particular color that's near and dear to your heart? You know, one of the fashion designers that I really loved, honey, back um, in the 80s, honey, which when I was living in Houston, oh, it just did my heart so well, honey. We loved, honey, me and my sorors, honey. We loved Willie Smith, honey. Willie if you Smith. didn't wear Willie Smith, bitch, you was thrown out of the sorority. Okay. And okay. Willie Smith was a black designer. And he died at an early age. Willie Smith and, honey, you, you had to wear Willie Smith and Perry Ellis back in the 80s, okay. honey. If you didn't wear those two designers, baby, the girls, honey, snubbed you. Yeah. But um, I loved Willie Smith. He had some... Fabulous clothes, some very unique clothes, honey. Okay. Very unique. And for color, I my color, um, believe it or not, I like red, but I don't put because I've had red a uh, red car before. I got a red tub and um a red what? I um and and, and I and I like red. What, what you said, a red what? I have a red tub, a red bathtub at my house. Really? Yeah, it, it's a beautiful. I wish I had a picture um on it, but yeah. So I just love red. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, you went through uh, a little scare a little while ago. Um, you beat cancer. Um, congratulations, man! That's a blessing. Oh well, thank you. You, you, we talk. You know a lot about. Every time we talk, we always talk about faith in God. And um, you wasn't scared at all. You never got. Uh, no. Nope. You never got. No, I, I promise you, I really wasn't scared. You know, I mean, of course, it was a thought, but I wasn't scared because I, I mean. It's just, and I was asking people, why am I scared of worry? And, you know, they remind me, because of your faith and stuff. I mean, I went through radiation, honey. When I went to the hospital, honey, to get my radiation every day when I got off of work, I would ask the doctor, who you cooking today? Right. Because radiation is cooking. Right. That's and right. I asked him, you know, I asked him that. And, you know, and he got, you know, he smirked about it or whatever. But, um, and I, and I wore my chemo, you know, in a, a fanny pack. Right, right, right. But um, I mean, it just, I, I, it just didn't scare me. Now, do I want to die? No, not right now, anyway. Right, but right, it, you right. know, I, I just, just, I did it and moved. I went to work every day. And you, and you did this um, without telling a lot. I'm sure you probably discussed with your mom and, and close, close circle. But the people that were around you every day didn't know until you were ready to tell them. So you was dealing with this kind of just internally. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, until I was ready. Because let me tell you something, honey, about illness. Now, some people this worked for, but it didn't work for me. Some people, honey, 
you know, want all this sympathy. Oh, I'm so sorry for you. I don't want all that shit. Don't do all that around me. Don't come around. Me. And that's just right. like with death in the family. If somebody died in my family close to me, honey, I just wanted to fade to black. I don't want you coming around crying and because you're making me feel sad and stuff like that. You know, I want to deal with everything in my time and I want to deal with it, you know, internally with me. But I, I don't want all that empathy or sympathy and stuff like that. I thank you for being concerned, but I just don't want I, I'm just right. I promise you, honey, I am not a goddamn uh, one of those persons that seek attention. I'm not an attention seeker right. or none of that, honey. I just want you to honey, just let me go. I'll share this with you, but just let me go. I don't want all the sympathy and all the rubbing in the bag and stuff. Cause it's just to me, I don't know how sincere it is. Because right. I've been on the other side and I know how people do. Girl, you know he got cancer, bitch, he gonna die. You know, and they, but they smile in your face and all that stuff. But I don't want all that. Just thank you for being concerned. But let me go. Let me come on to work just like you come to work and right. do my job. And that's that. And that's why I did it that way. And, you know, and, and that was that. Yeah. You know, so. They almost, they almost <laughs> seem like they want you to die so they can post an RIP and, oh, I, and post a picture. I was I knew Gary and post a picture so they get a little like. So they yeah. Can, you know, yeah, you know, so, more so, than, oh, he survived. You know, oh, but well, he survived. Yeah, so, shit about that. <laughs> so I don't like all that, but I mean, thank you for the empathy, though. But that's just not. Yeah, I don't really. Mm -mm, yeah. I don't need all that. Now let's let's talk about um your passion for and, and it's still an ongoing fight um with with AIDS and HIV with uh you know the whole cause that doesn't seem to get as much limelight is you know even before all this going on now it's kind of quiet you know but it's still something near dear to your heart can you speak a little bit about you know the fight you know that's still going on in yeah the world? And, and they still fight no honey but you know if people just not really i mean right now because of all this other stuff that's going on that's it's kind of put down in a back um burn or whatever yeah. but yeah but let me tell you something i used to work on the AIDS team honey back in the 80s I, when I was working at Baylor, honey, I used to work on the AIDS team. When AIDS was, honey, if you looked at somebody, you were scared you're going to die with AIDS or whatever. Right. That's how bad it was, honey. Right. When they had the, the capacity scar coma, if you got a red dot on you or something, people say, oh, girl, you're going to die. It was, just, mm -hmm. it was just really bad then. But it has changed tremendously. And I have had so many friends that have died from AIDS. And, you know, and it really saddens my heart. And it's amazing how my friend that recently died a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago, yeah. Um, how we used to talk about our other friends, you know, how they were gone. And it'd be like, now, I don't really have anybody, you know, to talk to, yeah. you know, about yeah. it. And, and all the friends about that have passed on and stuff. But but my thing is, I, I'm so glad that there's a close to a cure, at least. At least right. there's more out there now that's helping people live longer right. than, you know, it was back in the day, honey. That's right. So, so that's a good back, thing. Back in the but day, one of the back, things... Back in the day, was a, it was a death wish. You know, you got it, that was it. Oh, yes, that was it. So now, thank God, that has changed. But, you know, one of the things that just really concerns me, though, is most of when people talk about, anytime you talk about anything, honey, is what is black people have it more. How the hell really are we to have it more of everything? Right. You know, right. that's what well, I don't understand. Yeah. yeah. You know, we just have it more of, as, you know, they say and stuff. So, but, but my thing is, but I'm glad, you know, people are working, you know, toward a cure and just getting better. You know, and what have you, and people are living longer and stuff like that. And I, I say the same thing for cancer too. That's another campaign that I have too. I say AIDS, cancer, and mental health. And mental health, yeah. Because honey, it's just it's a yes. very sad thing. Yes. And you know, mental health is something that's you know near and dear to me too because I'm um clinically bipolar. Okay. And I take lithium, you know, for my bipolar, because honey, if I don't take my lithium, honey, it's over. It's on. So, it's on the bottom. That's a different me. Gary. That's a different Gary right there. Yeah, it would be a different Gary. So, but um, so that's the challenges that I have and the campaigns that I have, I should say, wow. that I um, oh, man, wow, work toward. Um, so we're dealing with a lot. Um, you know, especially you know our people. Um, right now more than ever, uh, dealing with injustice. Um, can, can you can you speak on that a little bit? I mean, you're you know we're both journalists. You know, you're you're on the radio, on TV, so you see it, um, you know, you, we have to. Like, I'm at the point where I'm so tired of seeing these fucking videos of, you know, police brutality, injustice. It, it's, it's exhausting, but we, we kind yeah. of have to stay up on it in order to talk about it, and it's almost uh, a responsibility. We have to. Um, I'm, tired of, I'm tired of seeing it. It angers me. What do you think is our next steps uh, going forward, and, and how can we... I mean, what's next, man? We we protesting. Well, what's next? 
Well, I think it was the next night with all what's going on now, honey, all the protests and whatever, because, honey, that, I am surprised that it's going on as long as it is, yep. for one thing. And, and I think that's a good thing. But, you know, it's amazing. Though. You, I mean, I'll never forget when I was traveling from here, from um, Georgia to Texas, mm -hmm. and the police stopped me. And trust me, honey, I was nervous as hell. I turned the gates up so loud, <laughs> baby, I put my hands out that window, and I let him know, honey, uh, you ain't got to worry about me helping you, honey. I turned up the gators, baby, to let him know, honey, I am not going to bother you. You ain't got to worry about me doing nothing to you. He kind of laughed, but, honey, I was serious, bitch. I'm like, uh-uh. He ain't going to beat my ass, honey, and then I'll be a statistic. Yeah. So, baby, I let him know, girl, look, I am just as timid and soft. You ain't going to get hurt. And, honey, I was able to go home. Did so, but I had to hey, do boo, it, When he walked up, hey, boo. And then I let him know, honey, because, uh-uh. I ain't for to hurt you at all. And like now, nah, recently I've been going to drive home, but I'm scared to drive home because all this stuff going on. Yeah. I'm like trying to be the man to a damn cop and be by yeah. myself and he been and beat my ass or something. And yeah. oh Lord, no. Yeah. So, so I've been trying to solicit for somebody to ride with me. So a couple of people um, said they would ride with me, but you know how that goes. Oh, that ride too long. Yeah. But I, I just be glad, you know, when it's all over. But I am so glad yeah. that the people are protesting, letting them know that yes. black people are tired. Yes. You know, black people yes. are sick and tired of being sick and tired, like Fannie Lou Hamer said, and stuff like that. But one thing, too, though, but I, I've talked about and I was kind of interested about, too, though, but I need to know just, too, now with all this shit going on, but I need to know about all these black men that got their white women at home. What do they talk about? I just want to know what they talk about. Ooh. You know, because, I mean, you know, what does Leroy talk about with Karen? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> what do they think of? I'm just curious, you know. I would like to know, um, because... This racism, honey, has been around for a long time, honey. So I would just like to know what he's talking about with her and yeah. stuff, because her people, honey, are oppressing him. Yeah. So, just, yeah. you know, that's just a curious thing. So, you know, yeah. no justice, no peace. No. So I'm just curious. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so, you, you know, it, it, you you let, just you a question. Let it off just like that, huh? Just, just how you going to do it. Yeah, oh, just, man. just curious. Um, so, again, people, if you have questions, if you look at the bottom of the screen, there's a question mark. You can type it right in. Uh, let me see if there's any in here right now. Um, here we go. This is from uh, Miss Scorpion Gold. I'll never forget seeing you driving in your convertible. It made me smile. What do you do for self-care? Let me tell you something. And this is the honest, truth, Silver. But still, okay, oh, self care. Like when you say self care, first of all, what what what's, what we mean by self care? Um, I, I, she's probably meaning hygiene or what? Yeah, may, maybe mental. Man, let's talk about mentally. I gotta take a. Huh? <laughs> He's. Like, I gotta take a drink first. Let me get, let me get me one too. And yes, this is whiskey. This is what first whiskey podcast. Now, um, so she said what self care? Yeah. Well, I mean, self-care, well, self-care, I just, I mean, I take care of me. I mean, you know. Um, Let's talk about me mentally. What do you do to keep your mental uh, straight? Like, oh, mentally, yeah. I, I um, you know, mentally, um, first of all, I take my lithium. I take my lithium every night, number one. And number two, you know, I just don't, you know, I, I learned how to just let things go. Because let me tell you something. I, before I started going to my psychiatrist and stuff, you know, I used to take everybody's problem. You can tell me your problem, bitch, and I took it and I carried it with me. And that shit made me go crazy. That was part of so that just made me explode. So now when people tell me their problem, I hear like, oh, really, girl? Well, girl, I'm sorry. You know, I can be empathetic with you and let that go. That's right. I don't carry it with me. That's right. It's not but I used to carry problems with me, and that shit made me crazy. But now I just let that go, honey. And what I do is I go walk the mall in the afternoon when I ain't got nothing to do, honey. I go walk the mall. Or I just drive around the city. I do it every night. I drive around the city, honey, and come home. I could be like, I'm home right now. I could leave, go somewhere, come back home. But at around yeah. 5 or 6 o'clock, I'll take me a ride, another yeah. ride. Yeah. That's my night ride. I'll take, yeah. And I come home. And, yeah. and that clears my head. I have to clear my head. I love, I love uh, joy riding. Um, that, that's always been a go-to in music in the joy ride. And, I, you know, yeah. my taste might be from super ratchet, to the holiest of gospel, it depends on my mood. But joyriding and music has always been kind of my my thing. Oh, music is everything. That's like when I take my no, when I do take my drive home on that ten-hour drive. 
I kind of don't like nobody to ride with me, but you can ride back with me. Because when I drive, that clears my head. I listen to my music, I cry, and I get on the phone. Thank yeah. God for Bluetooth. Yeah. I get on the phone yeah. and talk to everybody that I hadn't talked to in a while. So I talk to them, honey, and I listen to my good music. I listen to my honey. I love Diana Ross, bitch. I listen to Miss Ross. Yeah. I listen to Patti LaBelle. Yeah. I listen to Gladys Knight. And I listen to Whitney. I listen to all the women that make me cry. And right. I got my cry songs, bitch, and I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I got another question down here. Let's see. Um, okay. This is from uh, Miss Jamie Page. How do you feel about the Black Lives Matter and the Trans Lives Matter battle going on? Oh, honey. Like they say, all lives matter. I was just reading the other day, honey, a trans um was beat up in one of those towns that was marching and stuff, it was beat up and stuff like that, which is a sad thing. But what we still got to understand, though, regardless of what the um the battle is and what's going on, people, there's going to still be some crazy damn people out there and going to mess with, like, the trans people. It's going to still be somebody out there that's damn ignorant and going to mm -hmm. sit out there and do something, you know, with somebody that don't look like them. And right. But you turn your damn head, then they'll get with them later that night. But, you know, it's going to always be, you know, some shit like that. But uh, we all know that all lives matter hell, and that's just the way it is. But, you know, we're still living in the world today and in society. And, and like they say, when you're in wrong, do like the Romans. But, you know, people are going to do what they want to do. Yeah. And I know some people get triggered by the all lives matter. Um, and I understand both sides, but a lot of people will say uh, all lives can't matter until black lives matter. What do you think about that? Well, I don't know. That's still all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Well, yeah, because black lives are the, the lives that's not really yeah. mattering to people. Right. So yes, so black lives have to matter. Right. And then one black, because your life was already mattering. Um, that's Becky. Right. So, honey, so not let mine matter. Yeah, and so I think then we can all matter. That's what the trigger is, is because, yeah, I mean, you know, if we want to get technical. Of course, all lives matter, but we're the ones that's been fighting ever since I've Suppress, been oppressed. Oppressed ever since I can remember, ever since my mom can remember. So I, I think that's that's the trigger. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, it breaks my heart that we still have to talk about this shit now. This fucking shit has been going on since forever and it's the same shit over and over and I, I feel like thank God for technology now I know we talk about technology and how you ain't that great at it but being able to everybody have a camera in their hand has but you know what though Phil and that's true but let me tell you something too but I, I, I think I believe everything happens when it was supposed to and Yeah. the I George Floyd, Floyd thing happened it happened when it was supposed to because guess what we saw cameras with Rodney King but ain't nothing happened. Yeah, that's right. We had cameras with Rodney King. That's right. And it's the same shit that went on, honey. Shit. So, but now it's time. It happens when it's supposed to happen. Yeah. And now it's supposed to happen because look at all the shit that's going on now. We got um, the protesting, and we got Corona, yep. and then we got hurricanes about to come. Hurricane. All kind of shit that happened. Where, where them killer bees? Did one of some killer bees uh, coming? I guess well, they, they said it was killer bees, great. but they said it was killer bees, but I don't. I ain't never saw none. But everything happens when it's supposed to. Just like they say in our lives, everything that comes out, everything that's happening to you right now today and everything that's happening to me right now today was supposed to happen. Yeah. All those people that's tuning in to us right now, they, they were supposed to tune in. It was just like my daddy. When my daddy died, my daddy um, made it very clear because my daddy was a mortician for 38 years. Wow. Okay. And my daddy, of course, so he had everything together. So when my daddy died on Thanksgiving morning, he always said, if he died today, Today is Friday. His funeral needs to be no later than Tuesday. Well, my daddy died on Thanksgiving Day on Thursday. We had his funeral on Tuesday. And the deal was, like he said, everybody that was at his funeral was supposed to be there. Those who didn't come, they were supposed to be there. So everything that's happening right now is yeah. supposed to happen. Yeah. And yeah. this is when it's high supposed to happen. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Somebody at Coco underscore Kiwi. Coco Kiwi. I know that's a good mixture. Coco and Kiwi, but Coco Kiwi says, I'm from Port Arthur. How often do you come home? Um, I go home every month. That's what I told you earlier. But the thing is, hell, I can't go home now because it's Corona and honey, I ain't got nobody um to ride with me. But I will be home, honey, God spare at the end of the month, honey. You know, because if I have to go to a surgery or something like that. Yeah. But um, but that's the um plan though. So yeah, honey, I go. That's one thing about me, baby. I go home because I go home to see my mom. 
My oh. mama is still in Port Arthur too, so honey, yeah. I have to go. And I like going home, even though once I get there, um, silver, I complain like, oh hell, is bored as hell out here. But I still go, still go home. And, and, and Gary, with the T, I got, I got to uh, correct you. It's not Corona. It's the Rona. The Rona. Oh, that's how y'all call it. The Rona. Well, I say Scorona. Scorona. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have another question. Um, Vivacious932, how can we communicate to the younger generation that black on black crimes has to be stopped? Hell, it's not just young generation. It's huh? old motherfuckers doing shit too. But uh, Exactly. How can we? How so, can we, honey. That's a whole another topic in itself, man. That's a whole another topic. Yeah, that's a whole another thing that um breaks my heart just as much. But, you know, these protests. And I've even said it and then had to think about my words. I was like, man, how, how are we going to protest and, and we still killing each other? But they're really two different issues. One is um, the injustice that, and, you know, and being beat the hell up and, and shot and killed and not treated equally. And then one is the black on black crown. So these are two different issues that. Um... Yeah, you talk about that when you have a cop on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to get a couple of these questions. They they coming in now. Um, all right, this is from Nico underscore oh nine. Do you plan on ever having your own podcast here? You know what? I thought I had a podcast. I was talking and doing something, but uh, I had a podcast. But I guess I need to get an official podcast because I'll go out and talk and do something. But yeah, yeah. Um, we were working on it. And you know, let me tell you something. When you're dealing with people, honey, it just gets to be. You know, the thing is, uh, my thing is, I don't mind um, dealing, you know, working with people and stuff like that. But people, if you, to do a podcast, I want to do a podcast, and I was going to do a podcast, but and I thought I had the right people. But people start, honey, talking about all this big amount of money. Right. I have no problem with paying you. Right. But my thing is, like, you don't look at what I got. You just look at what we're going to do, because, honey, I worked for Ricky, damn it, when I first started with him as his personal assistant, honey, for pennies. Yeah. And that's another, thing, you know, another story, but we need to talk to the youngsters about Yeah. You, if you, you, you can't, first of all, we're not living in a, well, we are living in a microwave society right now where That's people right. want everything now. Right now. Well, I didn't want it now. I just wanted the damn job because I looked at the big picture. So for working from his assistant to, for penis to where I'm at today, honey, I'm glad I did the job. Yes. yes. So when these people come to you and start looking at what you got and thinking they should have it right now, just, no, girl, you got to wait a minute. You can have it, but you can't have it right now. Right. So uh, I've noticed, so, and I started out as an intern in radio and, and uh, apprentice for other DJs. And um, I did it because, like you said, because I loved it. And that was the first thing I was taught was like, you don't do it for the money. You do it because you love it. I mean, you can be unhappy as hell and get all the money. That's not what I was in it for. So I think a lot of, I noticed a lot of people when they say intern, yeah. they feel some kind of way. Like they don't want to, oh, intern, I ain't no intern. But why not? Yeah. Everybody, everybody has to learn. Everybody it's has to learn. just the way it is. It's you know, it's just the way it is, about. though. But yeah. Uh, you talked about uh, a psychiatrist. Um, do you feel more people, especially in the black community, we need we need someone to talk to and need someone to sit down with and, and get stuff off our mind and an unbiased opinion? Do you? How do you feel about that? Oh yes, honey. I definitely. I believe, honey. And a psychiatrist, I love my, I had two. I had my one in um, Dallas, and I have my one here um, in Atlanta, Dr. Tart. Right. But, honey, I love, honey, a psychiatrist. Because one thing about a psychiatrist, baby, you can go sit down with that psychiatrist and tell them everything you want to tell them. You ain't got to hear it again. So, honey, because that's between you and them, honey. They're that? not going to go put that out there and tell as opposed to a friend. But it helped, a psychiatrist helped me so damn much. Because let me tell you something. How the psychiatrist helped me. When I um, had my first breakdown when I was living in um, Houston, and you know, the, the psychiatrist told my parents that they thought, he thought that I was going through the problem I was going through because I wanted to tell them about my sexuality. Well, I don't recall wanting to tell them about my sexuality, but let me tell you something. When he, told, when he brought my mama, my daddy, and my uncle came down to Houston to visit me um, in the hospital, I was in the psychiatric hospital, Charter, and we had the conversation and stuff honey that was the best damn thing that happened in my life because my doctor told my parents that i was living an alternative lifestyle and honey after that day i mean everything was lifted off of me honey birds were lifted off me i was able to be me right. and that's right. how i'm able to be me today right because a lot of 
um, alternative lifestyles right now, walking around the day, honey, guys, honey, committing suicide, doing all kind of stuff, honey, crazy stuff, because yeah. their family didn't accept them. And so, and this is why they doing all this stuff because nobody accepting this stuff. So this is why you know you get the guys, honey, to to dress up and do it this stuff because sometimes they're not being accepted by their family, so they lash it out. I didn't have to do that. Thank you, Jesus, honey. Yes. And I'm telling you, me and my parents, we never discussed it a day after that. We Amen. never discussed. It. My Amen. parents never, honey, asked me nothing about my um lifestyle or nothing like that. Right. My brothers never asked me. Never. Ask me about my lifestyle. They have never seen me with anybody because I've always said, if I'm going to be seeing some damn body, that bass going to be around for a while because I'm not going to be all this here switching goddamn partners up every week. Yeah. And yeah. then looking like that kind of shit. Yeah. That was not happening for me. Yes. So, honey, I thank God, honey, for my psychiatrist. Yes. Both of them. They helped me out because, like I said, I love them and I love to go sit down and talk to them because it has helped me out tremendously. And yeah. I had friends tell me, you tell our mama anything about us, we gonna beat your ass. Girl, I ain't even worried about you like that. So, honey, you ain't gotta worry about me telling your damn mama, I'm just glad mine's no. <laughs> so, honey, you ain't gotta worry about that. And, honey, I have been able to live my life, honey. I promise you, honey, it has helped me out tremendously. Yeah. So, I suggest, honey, that people see a therapist. It ain't making you crazy That's right. or none of that shit. That's and right. all that, I, I don't wanna take all that medicine. Because, you know, black people, oh, I don't want all that medicine. Girl, look, that's why the doctor, the Lord created the medicine and put the doctor to be the vessel for you to have the damn medicine. If it don't work for you, don't take it. But take something to help you, period. Right. It's that simple. That's right. We're going to get to another question down here at the bottom. Let me see. Um, oh, Lord, this is a funny one. Uh, she got a long name. Uh, Lakeisha uh, uh, Sinatonosis. Uh, what is it like working and being around Ricky Smiley? I mean, working with Ricky Smiley, honey, is, you know, he's a crazy-ass man, but I love working with Ricky Smiley, because let me tell you why. Cause, and I'm not telling you this is because I work with him. Now, I mean, because all the, all the guys I work with, Russ Parr, Steve Harvey, mm -hmm. um, Mark McRae, mm -hmm. um, so many of them that I work with, honey, it really was good. But working with Ricky was the person that took me over, you know, I didn't start, honey, making money until I started working with Ricky. Because first of all, I started working with Ricky as his personal assistant. I was his personal assistant in Dallas. I worked with Ed for like eight years. And then um, we moved to Dallas, I mean, to Atlanta and stuff. But Ricky is a really nice person. You know, he got his shit with him, just like anybody else and right. stuff. That's right. But, um, but he's a really nice guy. He has a good heart and stuff like that. And, honey, he would do anything for you. Steve Harvey was the same way. I loved working for Steve Harvey. He was a great guy. Wow. He, um, I never forget Steve had his birthday party at the Playboy Mansion, honey. He flew me down, put wow. me up in a hotel, everything. It was just fabulous, honey. Russ was the person that gave me my start. Russ was a good guy. We still, me and all these people, I'm telling you now, we still talk today. Right. And one thing I liked about Steve Harvey, what Steve Harvey told me, I'll never forget it. He said, let me tell you something, nigga. That's how he told me. He said, I could call you a damn punk today, and you coming right back tomorrow being that same punk. He said, that's one reason why I hired. He said, because you are who you are. He said, you ain't trying to be nothing that you're not. Right. Wow. And that's one thing I love about him. And that's one thing what people got to realize, too, in this business, uh, any business. Honey, people like you so much better when you're being yourself. Being yourself. And since we, we were talking about sexuality earlier, and I'm going to just pick it back on it. My thing is, honey, I can only be me. I can't be um, Silver because Silver's already taken. Right. I can't be nobody else but me. But when you be yourself, honey, people like you better because they know you're not fake and they know you're not trying to get what they got. Amen. So you got to wow. say, you just have to be yourself, honey, and wow. stuff, you know. And, 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 and it'll work with all these jobs. I was the same Gary that got hired with all these men. Now, let me tell you something, too, now. Mm -hmm. Now, what Gary, this is Gary, not everybody else. No, everybody. Okay. I could only be me one thing, honey. I already know with my sexuality, my sexual preference, who I am. Right. I'm working with these heterosexual men. I can't go on these people damn jobs. Oh, girl, bitch. Oh, girl. Mm -hmm. That's Because you still got to respect these people. Because they still got their lives. And you yeah. got to respect that. Respect, yeah. And that's how I've been able to sustain on all those jobs. Because I be me. I'm still be me. Right. But I still can right. know that you can only bring so much of this shit to these jobs. Right. Because you just can't do that. That's right. You that's just right. can't do that. You're like, you can't go right. to your damn job, your corporate America job, with your ghetto-ism. Right. 
You can't do that. You got to govern yourself accordingly. Wow. So this is one of the things that really helped me a lot, honey, going through uh, my psychiatric health and, you know, just growing up and just listening to what my parents said and stuff like that. And, you know, and observing. You got sometimes observe your coworkers, you know, and see how they conduct themselves as well, too. And you put all that together and it'll make you the person who you might want to be. Right. Right. Wow. Wow, we got uh, one, one or two more questions because we're approaching that hour, and, you know, Instagram is going to drop out in a minute. If it drops out, man, if you want to come back for a few more minutes and answer some more of these questions, I would love to have you. Um, let me get another one of these questions. Um, not, not, okay, I like this one. Uh, WCG Photography 1 says, what was the hardest thing you had to deal with to get to where you are today? I promise you, nothing. Wow. Nothing was hard wow. because I stayed me. I didn't try to fake nothing. Mm -hmm. I didn't try to do anything like uh, be something that I was. I just stayed me. I had no hard problem. I didn't have no, you know, issues with people or anything like that. Now, later on the job with some coworkers, you know, I may have had some issues. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. as for getting on the job and doing all that, honey, mm -mm, nothing. Yeah. That's, and that's what it is. So, so the takeaway is be yourself. Um, because yeah. even they're going to love your hex anyway, so you might as well exactly. be your damn self. Might as well be your damn self. Now, what are you doing now to kind of to kind of get through these times with, like I said, we have to follow everything that's going on, especially because of because of our jobs and what we do. Uh, is there any special, anything extra that you're doing? Are you still just kind of doing, you know, joy riding, music, mental? Yeah. Any, anything extra doing. that you need to do, or are you able to kind of cope because you already have those methods in place? Yeah. I ain't doing shit extra, honey, but being bored. Hell, I do t radio from the living room, and I do TV from one of my bedrooms, honey. <laughs> that is. And I, then after that, I'm, and I'm like, no, wait a minute, let me say something. I thank God, honey. Trust me, I do it for my job, honey, because I could have yes. been in the cut. Yes. But let me tell you something what people don't realize. Though. I mean, yes, you do your job, but hell, it's, I'm bored. It's boring. It's boring when you're by yourself. Like my mama yes. said, people don't understand. Hell, it's just me. When I get through, I ain't got no damn body to talk to. Yeah. Some people got their dogs, or some people got their uh, four-legged or two-legged dogs, and they got yeah. their woman or whoever. It's just me. So, hell, I don't have nothing to do, so I'll take a ride, honey, or whatever. Yeah. I tried to walk the damn neighborhood one day, but um, 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 Park Street Becky, honey, attacked me. So when that damn white woman attacked me, honey, when I was trying to walk, honey, so I stopped walking. I Very just walked on the park. Now, I don't walk in the neighborhood. So Gary, Gary, check it out. We have uh, about 30 seconds and then Instagram is going to, so every hour Instagram, that's what it does. It goes down and comes back up on live. So let's go back down, everybody. We'll ask a couple more questions and then we'll ride out. So everybody that can hear my voice, thumbs up. We're going to go down and come literally right back up uh, with Gary with the T. So Gary, we're going to go out. When you see the live, pop right back on, all right? Okay. All right. Look, right motherfucker, I can be here all day. <laughs> all right. <laughs> It's just hey, I'm gonna hang it up and we're gonna come right back. Brother Gary with the team had to go to the Apple store to get him a new phone, man. That's what they told him. <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> Lord Jesus. They told me you had to go to the Apple store and get a brand new one. That's all right, baby. Jesus knows. <laughs> Are you out of Jesus juice? Yeah. <laughs> we ain't gonna hold you too much longer, man. I know. You know, you've been already working all week and, and probably get tired. Of, you ever get tired of talking to people like, oh, man, sheesh. Um, it's not so much the idea that you get tired of talking to people. It's just sometimes the way people approach you. You, just, right. just, you know, right. Um, or sometimes right. people say, I see you, but bitch, I'm not hiding. I'm walking out in the public. Shit. <laughs> you know, it'd be killing me. Hell, okay. You almost killed me just then. <laughs> Shit, I see you too. Uh, again, the, the questions, if y'all had a few more questions, drop them at the bottom where you see the question mark at. Uh, this is But First Whiskey Live. Oh. Gary with the T. Um, oh, but, but you know one thing, too, about um, not going into work, honey, and, you, know, you just get to put on anything, and I really hate that. I just throw some shit. I don't even be combing my hair, honey. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, I just don't feel pretty at all. Uh, but, but I just do whatever. I mean, but you still rock, you still got Defendi, so you 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 still popping, brother. Yeah, well, I just threw this shit on because, honey, it was in the closet, but I didn't have nothing to match with it. And 
It's just, I mean, I get a haircut every damn week. Why am I cutting my hair? I'm not going nowhere. I'm going nowhere. I, I hate that, you know. I'm going no damn I don't way. feel like dressing up or getting pretty because I just feel like it's wasted. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I need to go to the cleaners too. Yeah, I need to do something like that. Um, this is a good, I like this one. Um, Eve, I think that's Eve. I'm going to go with Eve. Eve? Where do you like to travel? Do you like to travel? Um, I like to travel, but I don't travel because I don't like flying. Oh, yeah, so I guess it's that fear. <laughs> yeah, I guess that fear of flying, honey. I would love to travel, honey, but I don't because I I don't fly. So I travel by carousel through all of my friends and the people that I talk. You went to Jamaica, girl. I went to Jamaica too, girl. Tell me about it. And I feel like I was there too. So I would, would love to travel, but I just don't like flying. Would huh? You, would you get on a boat? Do you are you scared of boats too? Yeah, no, I'm not scared of boats. We were supposed to take a cruise this year with the Ricky Smiley show, but they had to cancel it because of Corona. Right. But uh, I would like to see what a cruise was like over half your stuff like that. But I've never been on a cruise ever in my life. Really? So yeah. need to have eyes. So I would like to see. But then people say, "Oh, you're gonna get seasick." So, but I don't know. I just I like driving, but it's it's getting old now because it's getting old with me because I can't drive on the distance like I used to. But you know, I still try it. But um, no, I would love to take trips. So I would go somewhere if they could give me a shot at the damn door of the plane. Hey. Give me a shot, honey, to knock me out. And I could go. Yes. Trains are relaxing. Yeah, I want to try a train, too, um, um, Silver. I did the Marlboro. Me and have I. I would like to try a train, too, to see what it's like. I did the Marlboro, but it smelled like pee. I can't get into the Marlboro. <laughs> yeah, I rode the Marlboro. I, I used to ride the Marlboro um, every weekend when I first moved here. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, favorite person. is. Do you have a favorite person that you've ever interviewed? Um. Nope. All of everybody I've interviewed, I like. I've interviewed Oprah I, when they flew me down to LA oh. to interview her for this um, for that movie she was in with um, Ava DuVernay. I can't remember the name of it. Honey. Whispers mm -hmm. in the Dark. I don't know. And uh, but I, I like everybody I've interviewed because if I didn't like them, they wouldn't get interviewed. How about that? How about that? Um, so now, I mean, you know, what do you what do you like your hobbies? Is there a hobby? I know you love fashion. I know you love driving. Uh, you know, joy riding. Do you have uh, like a real hobby? Like, you know, like some people go bowling or some people go. Yeah, no. I, I, just, I like it if it's presented to me, stuff, but I just don't really have no particular hobby. I'm just a very boring person, honey. I would just love to be, you know, I think I, I got to watch what I ask for. But I think if I was in a relationship, I would do more. Right. Since I'm not in a relationship, I don't do shit, honey, but just go to the mall and right. buy stuff. And then when I get home, drop it at the door and, and it sit there for months yeah. until I decide to pick it up. If but um, I don't um, relationship, so you just answer that. Yeah, one, so there you yeah, go. I don't really have no hobby because I don't have nobody that I'm, you know, interested in or interested with to, yeah. you know, to just do something. And I know they say you're not supposed to live your life through other people. Well, I don't. But it would just be nice, honey, to have somebody to do something with. How about that? Trigger Happy One says they want to come hang out with the morning crew. How can they do that? Get got you got to get a job with them. <laughs> Yeah, you just gotta learn where everybody live and come to their houses and camp out with because everybody at their own house now doing their job, nobody working. So, right. but I'm sure once we get back, you know, then you know, I'm sure you know, you present that and then we could um take it from there. Yeah, we already answered where you originally was from. Um, and okay, this I like this one. Um, uh oh, there you go, you back in there. Uh, mm -hmm. Tony B 94.5. Says, how long you been in radio? Longer than him. <laughs> Tony B. Is that Tony B? They said Tony B? Yeah. Yeah. Longer than you, Tony B. How you doing? Tony B and I work together in Dallas. Okay. Yeah. That's funny. But I've been there long enough. I've been there since 89. You do the math. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. Oh, I like this one. I like this one. We just trying to get a couple couple of the fans you know get a chance to ask some questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tam says, "What financial wisdom or advice uh, can you provide?" What financial wisdom or advice I can do? What can you can you provide? Oh, honey, let me tell you. Do not, I went through radio once before and I left. I had to, you know I had the um the um opportunity to get fired or resign. So I resigned. Uh -huh. And at that time, I really wasn't making, you know, that much money. But let me tell you something, honey, what I learned. Because I saw a lot of people go ahead of me, baby, with radio, honey. And when you see, because when I was, honey, in promotions, honey, making $5, and they were on the air, honey, making hundreds of dollars, honey, I saw all that. And, you know, in your head, you're like, oh, that show would be nice if I had that. 
But let me tell you something, honey, when they let your ass go, and you took those hundreds of dollars and spent it and didn't save it or do nothing with it, honey, you was up a creek. You had to go work at Jack in the Box once you um, got off the air. But what I looked at and saw, honey, with my little penis, I said, Lord, when I left the station before I came, I said, Lord, if you bless me to get back in radio, this is what I'm going to do. And I did everything I said I was going to do. I said about, I said I was going to go to work looking nice. I was going to, honey, spend my money, and I was going to save my money. Because let me tell you something, honey. Right. If you don't save your money, especially while you're doing radio, and especially depends on the position that you're in, more so if you're on the morning show, because the morning show it makes, you know, the more money. And, right. honey, if you don't save that money, when they ask to let you go, honey, and you was flossing and popping bottles and doing all kinds of shit, honey, when you had the money, you're going to be looking some crazy. Right. So, honey, definitely, I spent my money, and I saved my money. Yeah. If they let me go today, honey, I would be fine. Yeah. So, yeah. honey, because, honey, yeah. you, got, you cannot be dumb. You got to be smart. Yeah. You definitely got to be smart. And radio, and in this entertainment business, honey, there's no job in certain positions on the show. Let me say that. Right. There's not a job on earth that'll pay you the money that you'll make, honey, in radio, honey, as opposed to you out there in the civilian world. That's so right. That's you need right. to save your money. You can spend it because ain't nobody sitting there to work it just to say, then your ass drop dead and somebody else going to spend it. Right. But, you, honey, you spend your money, but you save it too. Right. Yeah, so Don't I, be crazy. I remember Look. you telling me this. You know, we've, we've been working around each other radio for some years now. And I remember one of the first things you told me was like, I might have asked you, like, man, I'm about to go do this. I don't know if I should go buy this. And you said, man, you better buy it now while you got the money to get it. You better go get yep. this shit. He's like, because you might not have had that money next week. He's like, you working, you saving, you work every day. But you never know what this shit it might be going. You said, man, you better go buy that shit. So yep. every time I'm getting ready to buy something now, and I'm, I'm kind of on that fence, and I know I'm working, I get it right back every time I spend it. I remember your words in my head saying, Silver, you better go buy that shit because you might not always I remember. Have to buy it. You better get it while you're able to. Yes, yeah. so if, if it's something money, you, you want. You ain't going to have nothing. Exactly. If it's something you want to get, honey, get it. Because don't sit there and just hold on to your money and stuff like that. I think if you, you know, things are going to go. That's where it goes back to the last hour. That's where your faith comes in. That's honey, if you have the faith and it's putting your spirit to have it, honey, get it. Yeah. And if, it, if you lose it tomorrow, well, at least you had it. You stepped out on faith to get it. That's right. So get what you want to get and stuff. And like I told Sim, you better get it now because, honey, all that shit that procrastinating and stuff like that. Because mm -mm. the thing about it is how I look at it in some instances, too. Say, man, if you want to get those new pair of shoes, go ahead and get those new pair of shoes, honey. Because just think now, if the job gone tomorrow and stuff, now you then, honey, at least you got the shoes you wanted. Maybe those shoes could help you get a damn other job. But you just sat there, Woo! honey, and say the money didn't do it. It's going to go on something, too. So, but that's just my opinion. You better say that, man. You better, I, I, <laughs> let me see. We got a couple. Um, let's go to Rich Jeff. Uh, what is it like working at, uh, well, working with, with Dish Nation, not at the, with Dish Nation? Oh, I love working with Dish Nation. I mean, it's a fun job. It's an easy job. I mean, you know, it's, it's just, it's a great job, but I do like they have residuals. You know, that's cute, honey. It's always cute to have a little residual, which means, honey, you get a check that you didn't expect. You wake, and, and, you know, the people like, that, oh. Exactly. You know, and the people that I work with, you know, I like working with them and what have you. The company is a good company. So, you know, you know, so it, it, it's just a good, you know, it's a good thing. Yeah. It's a really good thing. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Uh, mm -hmm. So, okay. Uh, I'm not sure what the Vegas get down is, but how uh, 13 does want to know, how can we get him to come to the Vegas get down? How, who? I don't know. Do, well, do you know what the Vegas get down is? No, I don't. I don't know that. I guess. I guess the it sounds like some kind of sex toy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, who do you want to interview next? This is from All Love. Anybody you want to interview next? No, I mean. Whoever come for an interview, I will interview them. So, but I mean, I've interviewed, you know, a lot of people. Like I said, it's just not somebody that I just really want to sit down and like, oh Lord, I got to interview this person. No, I mean, whoever come through and we interview them, it'll be great with me. So I think people are are looking at you like a financial guru because somebody else wants. I see that. Me. So are you uh, thinking about investing, and do you have any ideas on where to start? Um, that's from Jay Lee. Do I feel like investing? Do, do you do you have do you have any um, suggestions of where to start investing? Oh, not at all, because I don't invest. I invest in my bank. That's why. <laughs> let me tell you something. 
and, you know, and this is back again. This is me. Everybody come up to you, especially Africans in America. You need to invest. You should invest. Well, investing is good, but guess what? I am not investment a stupid. I don't know shit about investing. I'm not gonna take my money. Ooh, girl, let me get this money to Leroy and yeah. let him go invest yeah. money in a car wash. I don't know nothing <laughs> about a damn car wash. You give your damn money to Leroy to go invest it. Then the damn shit go barely up and so now your money gone. Yeah. I don't have time to be thinking about no investment, but I can, but I can do. I get on my phone every morning and I look at my bank account yeah. and see what yeah. was taken out and what was put in. Yeah. I know how to do that. But if investment is for anybody, knock yourself out. His name was Bernie Madoff. They invested in him. And where they at today. So I'm not an investor. I mean, you know, as of now, no. Yeah, yeah. But you also you, you invest in your faith. And you and you're you're a smart person, so you're not spending all your money up. So you know, no. hey, I make this, I can put this aside, but then I have this this play, this my play money over here. And I know Yeah. That. Yeah. 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 Uh, when things get back, this is from just Tia. When things get back to normal, I guess we're talking about the Rona, I guess. Yeah. When things get back to normal, what's the first thing you want to do? Because you ain't getting on no plane, so it ain't no plane. No. The first thing I want to do, honey, I want to drive home, first of all, which yeah. I'll probably be doing that before it gets normal. But, I mean, I just want to, honey, get with my coworkers, sit down, honey, we go to lunch, you know, and talk and stuff. I put on some good linen and yeah. some nice sandals. I like my nice sandals in the summertime. And just sit down and talk and chat, honey. That's all I want to, um, you know, do. I don't. I'm easily to please. Right. So what's what's some tea? Any any good tea that we need to know about before we before we get about here? Any any good tea that we need to talk about uh, that, that that you up on that we need to know? Well, one thing that's at the top of my head with what went down with Trina. How everybody's attacking Trina because she called said she called black people animals and mm -hmm. so because all the rioting and stuff mm -hmm. was going on and stuff like that. I mean, come on, people sitting there talking about she said call us animals and all this. She didn't per se call you animal, but damn it, when you're out there tearing up shit and acting like a fool and different things like that, honey. I mean, that was her way of saying it. But she I don't think she just particularly just called a certain people animal. Did they decide they want to? Have her to lose her job. She shouldn't lose her job from that, damn it. Because we all done said something. Right. I done called a lot of people. Hell, I done called Rick about some black bastards. So, I mean, you know, it's just, it's no, I mean, it's not like you're doing it to hurt them or anything like that. So, right. but we have a tendency, honey, just, um, just, just act like we're just so sensitive with some things, honey. And it just drives me crazy. Yeah. You know, yeah. you got to watch what you say nowadays. You got to be very gingerly. When gingerly. you're talking about certain, you know, when you're saying and, things and, you and say stuff like that. Can you say gingerly again? One more time. Gingerly. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's just too much. So, but um, we just got, you know, it's going to be a great day, honey. Peace going to be still. Everybody's going to be happy. Yeah. No, don't say that. Whoever they're talking about, she deserved to be canceled. She should um watch what to work. Well, she watched what she said, honey. Y'all hush up. And Wendy is doing fine. And I love Wendy Williams. Honey. Wendy Williams yeah. is doing fine. It's just something about Wendy that I like. She just, you know, I've interviewed Wendy a couple of times before okay. she was Wendy Williams. Okay. And, uh, I mean, you know, she just, she's going through her shit, honey, you know, with mm -hmm. a man, honey. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you know, with her um her illness or what have you and stuff like that. So, but my thing is, though, honey, I just think we shouldn't just be so serious. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. you know just be nice. Yeah. I see I see a couple questions in here. Um and what? I don't keep up with, with this, so maybe you can help me if this this makes more sense to you than it will to me. Uh Sugar Hill says, Do you feel in the middle of Portia and Eva? I'm not sure what that means. Do you feel who? In the middle of Portia and Eva. I, I guess there's something going on. Oh, do I feel in the middle? No, I work with both of them. Yeah. So I work with both of them. I mean, I like both of them. So I don't know what they I don't know yet. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, man. What's the next one? That, that's that's the tea right there. My brother Gary check in with me, man. Uh, listen, how can they stay in touch with you and follow you and stay up on everything outside of Instagram, of course, because we're on Instagram together. Is there any type of? Uh, I know we talked about podcasts and shows. You have a website. Any way that they can really stay locked in with you outside of the show and, and social media? Yeah, um, Gary with the T, G A R Y W D T E A, and um, and what else? Um, uh, well, let me tell you something, Sylvie. You know, I promise you, I don't know how to answer all this shit. I gotta, <laughs> but I'm learning though, honey. They showed me how to um answer um like Facebook, I think, and all that stuff. I just, I, 
you know, and Verizon then closed around the corner of my house evidently. So you can't even get, like, get no help. Home. It's just ridiculous. And I, the Verizon I saw was way damn off of Camp Creek. I can't drive well, but it's getting no help. But I guess I'm going to have to because I really didn't know how to work these phones. And yeah. I've been having the phones, but everybody would laugh at me at work. Brad Headcrack would just laugh at me. They would show me and help me how to work the phone. Right. I just don't, I mean, it's just, I don't know if it's challenging or what it is, yeah. but y'all know how to navigate and know how to do all kind of stuff, honey. But now it's you call, just. You called me, cussed me out, what, yesterday or day before? Now, how the hell we doing this shit? I don't know how to work no damn Zoom. Yeah, shit. because. So how the fuck I have to. Was, let me know because like, they were doing it. shit. I don't know how to zoom. I tried to zoom on the phone. That didn't work. Put it on my pen. My friends called me on some other shit the other day. Um, I forgot what it was. I just don't know how to do it, and it makes me nervous, and it makes me upset because I don't know how to do it. But I'm going to learn how to do it, I guess. Yeah. And, and I'm not one to follow instructions. Just tell me. Yeah. Because reading instructions, honey, my nerves is bad. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I just can't do it, honey. But, um, but I'm going to get it, though, honey. It, it's going to happen eventually. But this shit here, what you just did, this was simple. Yeah. Just push yeah. a button. Why can't everybody just do this? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, because a lot of lot, the quality, the time restraints, it, it's a lot of things. I like IG Live, personally. Because um, once I'm done with this, I put it on YouTube and re-put it on my page. You know, everywhere I need to put it, I put it where I need to go. So it's simple. It's easy. I like Instagram Live. Yeah, well, it's good to me. Because probably later on on it. I, I have no no big problems with with uh I guess. well well I like it you just push a damn button and go because yep. Lord Jesus honey all that other stuff on the people had me doing I just couldn't do it it just wasn't working honey but anyway Jesus still sits on the throne honey <laughs> so that's one thing we know he still sits on the throne honey yes. and he made sure because I had some things to do that I said what do I have to do that I knew I had to go to the dentist but they canceled my appointment because the money didn't grow through so okay. then I'm like oh hell I got silver spoon shit to do. So I'm glad oh, you reminded me to do that, but honey. Oh, it, Silver Spoon, he also calls me Silver Lake. That's the other one. Yeah, Silver Lake. Silver Lake. I was like, he calls me another one. So I I I I grateful. And I thank all the people that tuned in and they were all so nice and sweet, honey. I was reading y'all. Um thank you, Lada. Late Lady Forever. Lady Forever. Great lady interview. Forever, it was, was uh, really dangerous. nice. She's um she's in uh, the Houston area, uh fifteen year old. Man, she draws, she uh sings guitar piano writes i mean she gave me oh she sent me hold on she sent me this picture she drew of me and let me let me get let me show you this real quick before we go gary because um she's the bomb.com man so i i'd be remiss if i didn't show you this hold on one second hold on love all y'all too honey you can hang it it's just she said this she drew this yeah. and sent me this, Gary. Oh, and that looks just like you, too. I mean, it would just look even better. I <laughs> she embellished, I mean, embellished it. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, she helped me out. She, she don't know she helped me out. Well, listen, I thank you, brother. You know, you didn't have to do this. I, you know, we, we talk every day, and I asked you to do it, and it wasn't even a question. You're like, oh, we want to do it. So I, I thank you for always being you. Um, and I know you're going to keep on doing that. And, uh, what yes, was the color Lord. Today? What was the color of the day again? Look, motherfucker, you need to remember it, honey. Scarlet. The color of the day, then, is fl Scarlet Flame. Oh, Scarlet. Because Scarlet, she was a flame. Remember that. She was hot. And that's red for your ah. color. <laughs> All right, man. I love you to life, brother. Amen. Love you, too. And you have a great day and a better tomorrow. You, too. You, too, man. And man, I will talk to y'all later. Bye, everybody. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> you got to do the A-time like that. Oh, that's the A-time? You oh. got to put the thumb in the middle. Oh. Not that far, Gary. That way. Hold oh. on. Not that far. <laughs> I got time for y'all shit. <laughs> Bye. Peace, y'all. Bye. <laughs> How you doing? I got you. Oh, shit. That's my man, Gary, with the T. Thank y'all. This is for First Whiskey Live.